This tutorial will demonstrate how to use your smartphone to film video using both your stock camera app and the Filmic Pro app which you can download for both iPhone and Android for around $15. We'll start with the iPhone's basic camera app. To begin with, we have to set the camera resolution. For those unfamiliar, resolution refers to the size and quality of an image. To do that, we'll go into settings and scroll down to the camera button. We'll click it and a new list will pop up. For now, we're just interested in adjusting the record video settings, so we'll click on that. This will bring up a list of different resolutions. In this case, the lowest is on top and the highest is on the bottom. It is always suggested to shoot in the highest resolution possible, which in this case is 4K. That said, it's important to know that shooting in higher resolutions will mean that your video files are larger. I'll talk about how this can impact the editing process later in the presentation, but for now, the thing to take away is that if you're shooting in a high resolution, you want to make sure you have plenty of room on your phone. Whatever choice you make here, you'll want to stick with that for your entire project. Switching between resolutions can be a pain in the editing process and leave your video with an uneven look. For this video's purpose, we'll go with 4K. Now, we'll exit out of the settings and go over to the camera app and open it up. You always want to shoot video on your phone using the landscape view, so tilt your device like so and then slide to the video function. From here we can notice a few things. The button on the right has turned red, but because the timer on the top middle hasn't started, we know that we haven't begun to record. To the right of the timer, you will notice that our resolution is listed. To the left, you have the option to turn on your camera's backlight. On the top right, you have the option to switch to the camera on the front of your phone, which is a popular setup for YouTube tutorials, but be warned, that camera is a lower quality than the one on the back. I highly recommend only using the camera on the back of your phone. Now we'll consider the image. The smartphone's default setting is to shoot video automatically. This means that the computer inside the phone will analyze the image, adjusting the exposure and focus to what it believes to be the correct setting. I want to stress that it's fine to shoot videos using the automatic setting. However, being able to control your image by adjusting manually is how you achieve a cinematic look and turn your smartphone into a professional grade video camera. There are a few ways to do this in the iPhone camera app. First, find a point of interest in your image and tap on it. This will set the focus and exposure of the image to that point by bracketing it with a golden box. You can also adjust the exposure manually by sliding the sun icon to the right of the box up and down. You can slide that box around your image by dragging it or reset it by tapping on a different part of the image. If you plan on moving the camera in a pan or tracking shot or an object in your frame is subject to move, it is a good idea to lock the focus and exposure by pressing and holding on the box until the golden AE slash AF lock icon pops up. Having your exposure or focus fluctuating automatically during a shot can lead to poor footage and is a large reason why I'm an advocate for shooting manually. Now that we've got our settings right, we can begin to record. If you want even more control, you can download an app like Filmic Pro. We'll briefly walk through the Filmic interface to demonstrate the power of the program. As you can see, there is quite a bit more going on in the screen than on the generic camera app. In the bottom middle, we have a shadowed cluster of information that includes our timer with the audio level meter below. To the right of that, we have our battery and file storage meters, and to the left, we have our frame rate and resolution. To adjust these settings, we'll click on the gear icon and a menu will pop up. First, we'll adjust the resolution. You always want your image to be in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which will be the default. Again, you have a few different options for resolution, with the lowest to the left and the highest to the right. The bottom slider adjusts the size of the file, and again is measured lowest to highest, left to right. Leave this as high as possible. To exit this screen, click outside of the box. Next, we'll adjust frame rate. As you can see, we have significantly more options here, including my preferred 24 frames per second. You can also adjust for time lapse and slow motion using these settings. The top slider adjusts for capture, while the bottom adjusts for playback. For simplicity's sake, we'll set these both to 24. Next, you can adjust the audio settings. The bottom slider will adjust sample rate of the audio file, the middle will adjust the type of file, and the top slider adjusts where the app will record from. The button on the bottom is an option to attach a Bluetooth microphone. For our purposes, we'll have the back microphone record a PCM file at 48 kHz. 
These are the main settings we'll adjust, but there are a few more buttons to be aware of. You can use the Presets button to save your current settings, or load a previous setting preset. The Stabilization button can be handy if you are shooting without a tripod, as it will smooth any hand tremors that can cause your image to jump. And finally, the Guide button will give you a handy Rule of Thirds grid to help your composition. Next, we'll exit out of the Settings window and go to the bottom left corner of the screen to click on the Color Wheel icon. This is a key feature that differentiates Filmic from a generic camera app because it allows you to manually adjust the white balance and color profile of your image. The first screen you'll see is this one. The main thing to focus on is the AWB icon in the bottom right. When it's blue, this means that the program is adjusting the white balance for the light environment of your surroundings. When it's red, it means that you have locked the white balance. It's a good idea to get a new reading before you start shooting in a new environment and to lock this in place once you find the right white balance. There are presets at the bottom of this box which account for different environments, but I had best results using the automatic feature. The next place of interest is the second screen down. It's here that you can adjust the color profile. Filmic comes with a standard profile, but you can buy add-ons including the flat profile that I used for the Stormfest video. The reason I wanted to shoot my footage like that is it's ideal for color correcting in the editing process. A beginner shouldn't worry themselves about this part of the program now, but I wanted to highlight it anyways because it really demonstrates how powerful this app is. Next we'll play around with the exposure and focus features. To adjust focus from the main display, move the white box around the image. To lock it in place, tap the box until it turns red. To adjust the exposure of the picture, slide the white circle around the frame and lock it by pressing until red. By clicking on the button to the right of the color wheel, we can bring up the exposure wheel to the left and the focus wheel to the right. We can adjust these by pressing down and sliding our fingers up and down the wheels. And we can also lock these adjustments in place. You can turn the focus wheel into a zoom lens as well, but be warned. Because the camera lens is digital, the closer you zoom, the more pixelated the image becomes. To review videos you've already recorded, find the play button on the bottom right and scroll through your options and to record turn the big white circle red. As you can see, the Filmic app is a powerful tool. It has the ability to turn your smartphone into a professional grade video camera.